Database Administrator's Comprehensive Guide to Backup Strategy. Introduction. With increased frequency of breaches and outages, it's more important than ever to have a solid backup strategy. And with the coronavirus pandemic leading to a massive increase in employees working from home, it's critical to be able to protect remote data in many different locations. Why is data backup important for business? Backup protects data from several risks, including hardware failures, human error, cyber attacks, data corruption, and natural disasters. It's important to protect data from any potential issue so that an organization isn't blindsided when something happens. A proper data backup platform will enable the user to return to the last known good point in time before the problem hit. In a best case scenario, your backup should lead to a quick recovery of at least mission critical data. The 3 2 1 rule of backup is a solid strategy to follow. In this concept, an organization has three copies of data stored on at least two different types of media with one copy sent off-site. In a remote work environment, cloud backup is valuable off-site resource. Remote work is especially risky from a data protection point of view because cybersecurity likely isn't as strong on the home network and users might be working on less secure personal devices. The organization can centrally back up remote users' data to the cloud. Offsite backup, which might go on tape cartridges, is also important to protect against a natural disaster or cyber attack that takes down a data center. What should be included in a backup plan? It's first important to make sure you have a data backup plan as many organizations don't have one. The plan provides a starting point for backup and recovery activities. One of the first places to begin in creating a backup plan is to conduct a risk assessment and business impact analysis. The risk assessment identifies the issues that could negatively affect an organization's ability to conduct business. The business impact analysis determines the potential effects of a disruption to the organization's operations. These assessments are key for disaster recovery plans, but they can provide valuable input for the backup plan in terms of what to backup and how often. The scope of the backup plan identifies those metrics. The data organization must backup and the frequency of backups. Some data might not need backup, while mission-critical data might require continuous data protection. It's important to document that information because without it, the, organizations, the organization risks having large and unwieldy backup sets. The organization should strive to make backup management as easy as possible so that recovery is a reliable process. The plan details the organization's process to, of performing data backup. For example, who is involved, which programs and products they use, and the location of the backups. It includes the procedure for testing, reviewing, and updating the process. The plan should also provide the cost of the data backup strategy, but make sure to update this section frequently as prices and workload volumes change often. Evaluate options hardware versus software versus cloud. The data backup market is large and continuously evolving. As a result, organizations have a wide variety of choices. To start, your organization must decide if it will use hardware, software, the cloud, or a combination. Some data protection vendors only manufacture software. For example, BEM sells backup and replication software and has 
partnerships with several hardware vendors. Plus, it offers cloud-based products. Backup hardware typically refers to a disk-based appliance. In a common setup, the storage device will have integrated software that manages the backup data. The hardware is a storage target for copies of data. Hardware lives in a data center, whether it be the organization's main office, a remote site, or both. Software and the cloud don't require the use of a data center. As a result, it's easier to troubleshoot from home, which is especially helpful when employees must work remotely. Cloud backup is simpler to start running and maintain than on-premises backup. In fact, organizations that want to remain hands-off can choose cloud backup that leaves management to the provider. So here's the 3 to 1 backup strategy in image. So here we have three copies, so one primary and two backups. And the three copies should be stored in two types of storage. It can be this tape and we also have one off-site storage. So this is a typical 3 to 1 backup strategy which is being used by most businesses. Storage options. Backup storage options include this tape and the cloud. Each have their advantages and disadvantages. As the 3 to 1 rule of backup shows, using a combination of media types is smart. This based backup is typically among the most expensive options, but it's also fast because it physically lives in an office. It's susceptible to damage in event of a natural disaster. Cloud backup runs cheaper, but only to a point, as it depends how much data your organization is protecting. The cloud gets expensive over time and as volumes grow. It can also take a long time compared with an on-site option like this to pull data out of the cloud depending on bandwidth and volume. It's off-site, so safe from disaster, from a disaster and the data center, but it's also online, so it's still vulnerable to cyber a cyber attack. The tape is more commonly used for archival purposes. Now, it's still a backup option. Its advantages include security, at as it's inherently offline, so it's safe from cyber attacks. The latest tapes store a high volume of data, up to 30 terabytes of compressed capacity in LTO8. They require maintenance and management to ensure they are safe and secure. For example, having them transported to an Iron Mountain facility. Tape speed has improved over the years. But on-site, this is typically faster for recovery purposes. So here are comparisons of tape and disk. So portability, usually tape is more portable. And for this, not usually portable. Although it is possible to store backups off-site by backing up to a remote SAN, a cloud application, or using RDX, removable disk technology. The capacity. Each tape has finite capacity, but backups can span multiple tapes. This finite this is generally only true for a SAN or SAN. Every storage array has a finite capacity, even if the capacity has not yet been reached. Speed. Tapes are somewhat slower than this due to the linear nature of tapes. For this, very fast because these support random access. Availability. A tape must be loaded before it data, its data can be restored. This can be problematic if the tape is stored off-site. Most recent backups are available on this. Reliability. Tapes are more reliable than they, are, they once were but are still vulnerable 
to demagnetizing and to being eaten by tape drives. Generally reliable, but a single disk error can render an entire series of backup useless because many disk-based backup applications perform black-level incremental backups. For the administrative burden, for tape, a user must typically submit a help desk request and then wait for an administrator to restore the backup. And for this, multiple versions of files are usually retained online and users may be able to restore their own files. Backup frequency. Tape-based backup typically occurs late at night. There is a large potential for data loss if a failure occurs before the backup has had has had a chance to run. Many disk based offerings perform backups on a continuous basis, ensuring that ensuring the latest data is always backed up. Choose a vendor or a platform. The backup market has a wide range of vendors, from companies that have been in a field for decades to startups specializing in cloud backup. The market also includes vendors that provide a variety of other products, not just backup focus offerings. Comvault and Veritas are two of the most veteran players in the market, and both have adapted to provide more data management capabilities in addition to backup and recovery. Dell and IBM are two of the companies that have been around for a long time and provide other IT services. These legacy vendors typically provide both hardware and software. Backup vendors that made their mark in the last 5 to 15 years include VM, Rubrik, and Cohesity. VM was originally a pioneer of backup for virtual workloads but has since expanded to physical and cloud protection and become an overall market leader. Rubrik and Cohesity led a movement in converged secondary storage, which combines several data protection and reuse elements into one platform. As the cloud has taken off in recent years, cloud-based backup provides, providers have seized the opportunity. Those vendors include Acronis, ArcServe, Asigra, Druva, and Spiny. In just, a few, in just the last few years, several new backup vendors have launched to provide general services or target specific areas such as cloud-based data. Cloud Daddy focuses on focuses on data backup or on backup of AWS data. Clumio provides backup as a service. HYCU offers multi-cloud data protection. Casten specializes in Kubernetes backup and own backup targets backup of Salesforce. Other vendors are making conscious effort to combine backup and cybersecurity. For example, Acronis started out focused on backup but now offers what it calls cyber protection. While cloud backup pioneer Carbonite acquired cybersecurity vendor WebRoot before getting acquired by Open text so we have here several vendors and platforms so as a dba it, you have to review the pros and cons the strength and the weaknesses of these vendors and the software maybe they are hard software or the hardware they are selling implementation once you have the one once you have your plan and products in place it's time to implement your data backup strategy Follow your data backup policy, a key piece of the backup plan, for guidance. The policy lay, lays out the methods for planning, executing, and authenticating backups. It includes specific activities to ensure, ensure that your data box, backups back up, box up to safe and secure storage. Rather. There are several types of backup, and you should choose according to your backup schedule. Here are some of the most popular options. A full backup, 
So that's one option. It's just that, it's just that, a copy of your entire system. An incremental backup copies all the files that changed since the previous backup. A differential backup copies all the files that changed since the last backup. Backup scheduling is key to having the right amount of backup data for your organization. One example of a schedule has a full backup every week or every other week and an incremental backups every day in between. It's likely and necessary to do a full backup every day as not all data is mission critical and the space and cost of the data backup strategy would get hefty. So here is an example, a typical backup schedule. So let's say for example, on Monday we have a full backup and then on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, incremental. And then on the next week, Monday, incremental up to Friday. And then after two weeks, we have another full backup. And then again, incremental for several days. And then after two weeks again, we have the full backup. So this is an example of a typical backup schedule. But again, this depends on the, how critical your data are. So if they're critical, maybe you can have full backup every Monday. But you should also learn that once you have full backup, full backup is quite slower than incremental backup. So you have to weigh, as a database administrator, you have to weigh your options. Are you going to have backups every Monday or is it every other week? So it depends on your business and how critical your data is and how big is your data, of course. So build a recovery plan. A backup is only as good as its ability to restore. As a result, your organization also needs a recovery plan. A good recovery plan should do several things. Number one is outline how an organization plans to restore its backup data. Data restoration techniques include instant recovery, replication, continuous data protection, and restoring from traditional backups. Describe how quickly and how much data an organization must recover to function. These metrics are the recovery time object, RTO, and recovery point object, RPO. It's important to be honest about these parameters. Organizations must take a close look at what data they need in a recovery situation and how fast they can get it. As such, it's probably not feasible to say your organization needs all its data recovery immediately. A tiered recovery plan is more practical. Backup and recovery planning should align with the re your organization's overall disaster recovery plan. The aim of DR is to get a business backup and running following a disaster. The DR plan incorporates results of a risk assessment and business impact analysis. So again, the backup and recovery plan is a part of the overall disaster recovery plan. So when we say disaster recovery plan, this may include other items maybe not belonging to the information technology department or for the IT department or maybe the IT infrastructure. So not necessarily the IT, IT infrastructure of the business. Employee training. Employee training is also essential to helping staff understand the back data backup strategy and what to expect in a recovery situation. The coronavirus pandemic resulted in many layoffs and furloughs. As a result, some general IT administrators might be tasked with backup work they haven't done before. One way to get up to speed on an organization's backup process is to read the appropriate documentation if that's available. This further shows the importance of having a documented and continuously updated data backup plan as it helps an employee new to the job start with more than just a blank slate. To get out in front of potential issues, your organization should designate other staff that can take on backup management if the primary backup administrator is unavailable. IT staff managing backups have to fulfill a tall order these days. 
data sets are growing exponentially, therefore so are backup data sets. It can appear overwhelming to keep handle on it all, but there are ways to mitigate this issue. Administrators should verify the organization's backup retention requirements, review the backup architecture and how well it's working, and create data life cycle management policies for backup. Testing and review. You probably heard it before. Test, test, test. How do you know if your backups are good without testing them? Testing doesn't need to be overwhelming, but it must be consistent. You should explore why it's important plus key steps, such, such as documenting a test plan, using automation, and ensuring accuracy. Backups can fail, but it's better to have them fail in a test than in a live recovery situation. Your backup test frequency should align with how frequently you backup data. Mission critical data, for example, will be backed up the most, thus those backups should receive the most frequent testing. You might have done it in another piece of your data backup process, but make sure you assign a critical a criticality value, which will help determine testing frequency to each backup. So the criticality value can be a number, let's say 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, in which maybe 5 is the most critical data or application or, or whatever. Okay, So you can have this value. A test is an important step, but it's not the only one in the review process. It's critical to analyze the results of testing and see where your organization must make changes. You might also find that bringing in an outside agency for backup auditing will further detail the effectiveness of your backups. After all of the review, update your plan, the data backup plan should not just sit on a shelf or idle on a computer. It is a living document that requires continuous updating. Make sure you back, your backup, uh, backups are secure. You should feel confident that they can handle any recovery situation. So here's an example of the criticality and the frequency of backup. So here we have criticality value 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Let's say 5 is the most critical and 1 is the less critical. So for applications, if it is less critical, you can have it back up monthly. But for the very critical application it should be backup daily for virtual machines it can be bi-monthly for lesser critical uh, by virtual machines and again daily for critical virtual machines data files can be monthly if it is less critical and it can be twice daily if it is very critical databases may be bi-monthly so every two months Okay, and then it, for very critical databases, it can be twice daily. For archival of data, it can be twice a year. And it can be quarterly if it is uh, more critical and it's becoming more pre frequent. So if it's very critical, it can be every week. Legacy assets can be twice a year. And again, increasing the frequency and for the very critical legacy assets, it should be weekly. System and network files. So it can be monthly for uh, less critical system and network files. But for critical, it should be weekly. So again, we are increasing its frequency. Non-electronic assets it can be quarterly. By monthly, monthly, weekly, and then for very critical non-electronic assets, it should be weekly. Now, we can have here a template as a data backup plan template. You can download this using this link here. Oh, sorry. Using this link here. So if you find that you need a documented outline to your data backup plan, check 
out this free template and guide so here's a template and guide you can download it and plug it in, in the necessary information from your scope to the backup policy to contact information so you just download this and you can make some changes and depending on how uh, you make it fit to your organization creating the data backup plan should be a team effort although one person might document it it's important to share it with other key stakeholders such as executives for their review and input data backup planning is an essential business activity with so many threats and risks your organization must have a ready copy of its critical data in the event of an unplanned incident so that it can continue continue operations in addition to loss of revenue, downtime is costly to company, reputation, and employee morale. So if you're starting the data backup strategy process or looking to update a current plan, don't put it off. Data volumes will continue to grow and potentially get more complex as workloads spread around several different architectures. The backup future will likely be more cloud-based so plan for the evolution so if you're not using cloud-based yet you have to prepare for that or you have to do some research to use cloud-based backup it's a great time to work on your backup planning so that ends this uh, video to stay taken from the article of the website that i placed on the first page of this PowerPoint presentation. So thank you very much.